And without further ado, let's go right ahead and go into our first segment, which is going to be Team USA beating Australia yesterday. Now, the score was actually really close. I wasn't expecting the score to be this close. And I made a little bit of a mistake in the last podcast. I thought that the game was going to happen at 12 o'clock midnight. I was wrong. It happened right when I was recording the segment. So, oops, that was a really big mistake. But that's not going to happen again because their next game, they play same time on Wednesday. So I will be covering the game, you know, live. I'll be looking at it on my TV screen while at the same time doing my segments. So I'm going to be a little bit of a multitasker here, but I'll give, you know, updates on the score and updates on like the team success and what the team is doing and the starting lineup because in this game as i mentioned before in the previous segment there was a starting lineup change so anthony edwards was moved to the starting lineup and jason tatum was also moved to the starting lineup in response to i think it was you know the matchups that australia had for them as well as you know just the overall performance that anthony edwards was you know giving out in this game now he wasn't in my, you know, players of the game for, you know, today, but it's not like he didn't play well in this game. He ended the game 5 for 11 from the field with 14 points and also was able to rally two assists, four rebounds, and two steals. Again, this wasn't my player of the game for Team USA, however. I actually have two of them, as usual. So, Devin Booker ended up scoring 16 points, ended up getting three rebounds and two assists. And Anthony Davis, again, makes this list, being one of the arguably the best player on Team USA. He ended the game with the most points, the most rebounds, and he only got one assist, but he was also able to record two blocks, as well as, yeah, that was basically it. Most of the rebounds were from the defensive side. Actually, they were split half and half. He got seven defensive and seven offensive rebounds. So, why isn't he starting? Nobody knows. But these last few games, Anthony Davis has completely outplayed Joel Embiid, despite the fact that Joel Embiid is starting. And, I mean, ironically, Joel Embiid had the fewest minutes on the court in this game. So, clearly, he shouldn't be in the... He should not be in the starting lineup. Clearly, Joel Embiid shouldn't be in the starting lineup. I'm sorry. He is embarrassing the United States with his style of play. It is gross. Now... He ended the game with 10 points, sure, but still, he should have way he should have way more production considering how he was such a competent player in the league. Now, he also ended up taking the most free throws, shocker, in in the starting lineup. But the end at the end of the game, I mean, Devin Booker was the guy that ended up shooting the most free throws. He went 7 for 7 from the free throw line, but who else played really well in this game? Another player that's going to get like shoved under the rug for Team USA and their performance, Tyrese Halliburton. I mean, these past few games, he's ended with the best box plus minus in Team USA. So while he does come off the bench, he does bring immense value. Now, really, the starting lineup, it should have Kevin Durant in the starting lineup when he gets healthy, and Anthony, excuse me, Anthony Davis should be in the starting lineup. Look at these numbers. These are numbers that that are with him coming off the bench imagine if he was to start now he did get starting minutes i mean i wouldn't say that never mind he didn't really get starting minutes because every single one of the starters except for joel Embiid, ended up having at least 20 minutes now everyone else coming off the bench had 18 minutes which isn't that bad like i'm not really complaining about that but I would much like to see Anthony Davis get in, put into that starting lineup and get to play 20 minutes because I feel like he would bring so much more value than Joel Embiid. Now, on the opposing side for Australia, the best player for Australia was without a doubt... Um, oh, hold on, can I pull him up? There we go. Jock Lindale. He played for Houston. He played for San Antonio. He played for the Suns. He played for a lot of NBA teams. And he ended up scoring 20 points, got 7 rebounds and 6 assists as well. And another player who I don't really like mentioning, you know, by his name and for personal reasons, Josh Giddy. He ended up getting 17 points, 8 rebounds, and 7 assists. Not really going to touch on his performance all that much because, you know, I have mixed opinions on him. Now, about the actual game... 
like like I said before, I was unable to really watch it because I didn't know that the game was going on while my podcast was going on. So it was like kind of it was kind of rough that I didn't get to see the entirety of the game. But from what I did see, it really like, you know, Team USA has always been a juggernaut of a monster, right? Like it's always a juggernaut team to face in the Olympics. And this game didn't really feel like these guys were juggernauts, right? As you could tell by the score, it was really, really close. Like, the team, Australia was scoring pretty efficiently, if, if you were to ask me. Like, they were, they didn't really shoot that well from three, which was the biggest difference maker between the United States and Australia. And, but they shot very well, like, from within inside the arc. So, I feel like the biggest problem that Team USA has been has like been going up against is you know defense around the painted area and defense from within inside the three point area, right? Because when you think about it, that's really like what the the teams are. That's really what Team USA somewhat struggles in. Like having Joel Embiid in that starting lineup, sure he is a competent rim protector, but he's definitely not as competent of a rim protector as someone like Anthony Davis, let's just face it. And most of these NBA starters and most of these NBA players, they're used to guarding shots from outside of the three-point line. Like, you rarely see a bunch of players take mid-range shots in the NBA now. So adjusting the defense to try and, you know, focus on the defense from within inside the arc is going to be a difficult task for this team, as, you know, alluded to this two-point shooting percentage. But aside from that, I mean, really, like, I'm very surprised that this team was unable to sort of pull away from Team USA and was able to sort of, like, you know, end up winning the game at the end of the day, right? Like, they ended up winning, sure, but I expected them to win by a lot more than just six points. Usually, Team USA wins in a blowout almost every single game, and when they don't win in a blowout in every single game, something is the matter, there is a problem, And, you know, all of us USA fans, we get a little bit scared, I guess you could say, and intimidated because it's like, okay, why are these guys, you know, somewhat, why are these guys somewhat competitive? Like, we always destroy every single opposing lineup, no matter who it is, it doesn't matter what kind of player it is, right? Always Team USA seems to win. And, you know, they ended up winning, but they didn't end up winning in quick enough fashion i guess you could say like they let them linger a little bit which is something that you know as team usa you don't want to make a habit of doing because usa basketball it's usa's sport to beat right like that's the team that everyone wants to beat so you can't let up you can't allow a team to sort of stay within the game even a little bit because if you allow them to do that then they are going to do whatever they can to try and win the game in the end. And it's like, you know, you just can't allow that to happen if you are a member of Team USA. It's a lot of pressure going into this game. I also should mention that Steph Curry was, despite the fact that the three-point line is really, really close, like, you know, a lot closer than what the NBA players are used to, Steph Curry was really, really bad in this game. He shot one for six from three, which is appalling for Steph. That is horrible. And we really need Steph to sort of step up in this game. We also need and we also need Joel Embiid to get on the bench. I am not going to sugarcoat it. Joel should not be starting. Period. Done. Get him on the bench. They did a very Steve Kerr did a very good job with the starting lineup, putting Anthony Edwards in there and putting Jason Tatum in there. Yes, they were fantastic. But Joel Embiid in that starting lineup is killing the United States. I wouldn't I would much rather he never plays a single minute for the United States ever again. I would very much rather have that than to deal with Embiid in the starting lineup. I would so much... Like, Bam Adebayo, he was he was fantastic in this game. Like, Bam coming off the bench, he was great. He was 4 for 5 from the field and ended up shooting two free throws, made both of them. He didn't really get that many rebounds, but he was also sharing the court with Anthony Davis, at least from what I was seeing. And he ended up getting 10 points. Like, that's really, really good. That's the same production that Joel Embiid was giving on much better efficiency. Like, bench him! Plain and simple. But that's really all that I have to say for you guys on 
the first segment. Again, I'm not a big fan of Joel Embiid, as you guys can tell. I don't think he should be starting, but let me know in the comments what you guys think. Do you think Joel Embiid should be starting just because of his name and his reputation in the NBA or whatever it is, or do you think he's actually a good fit for the lineup? Me personally, don't think he's a good fit. I think it's just, it's just not it. Like, in my personal opinion, Joel Embiid, he shouldn't even, if we're being technical, Joel shouldn't even be on the roster. Like, if we're being very, very serious, he should not be on Team USA's roster because, you know, he should be playing for either the French team or Cameroon even. But aside from that, you know, he does what he wants. He wants to get a gold medal. But yeah, like, really. And a lot of people on the internet and a lot of people on, like, the media, they also don't really agree with the fact that Joel Embiid should be in the starting lineup. I know I don't, but aside from that, we can go into the second segment, which is going to be about the Clippers president speaking out about, you know, Kawhi Leonard not being on Team USA's roster. It's a little bit more complicated than what I initially thought, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about that right after this short break, so be sure to stay tuned. I feel like I'm losing my mind everybody in the world blind please lord give me a sign a sign i feel like i'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind please lord give me a sign a sign I want to be the greatest. Everybody on the face shit. I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest. I make this every day and I'm impatient. Hoping one day I blow up from the basement. Statement, the top is so vacant. I don't need shit that I think is amazing. Waiting for my day when I'm playing. Sold out shows for a thousand faces. Hey, give me that crown. Get in my way and to be put down. It ain't your place. All this my sound. If I want that shit, then I'll get it right now. I'm losing it. The noose fits. I'm losing shit. A stupid myth. You choose to live or choose to dip. You choose to fight or lose your grip and lose a gift. Oh. I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world 